Launched all the way back in May 2013, the Canon EF 200-400mm f4L is one of very few lenses with a built-in 1.4x teleconverter. But does that make it worth buying over other super telephoto zoom lenses, or maybe even newer Canon mirrorless lenses? Let's find out in today's lens review. And I'm going to start right now. So let's kick this lens review off, firstly talking about the overall build quality, the lens design, as well as what you get inside the box. Now as you can expect from a lens of this price point, as well as it being an L series lens, you should expect amazing build quality. And to be honest with you, that's exactly what you get with this lens. So this lens has got 25 elements in 20 groups. But what makes this lens fairly unique versus other lenses on the market is it's got a built-in 1.4 times teleconverter. Now, a teleconverter is designed to boost the magnification of your lens, turning this traditional 200 to 400 mil focal length into a 280 to 560 mil. And that's really the big pro of using a teleconverter, although there are definitely a few drawbacks. One being you do lose quite a lot of light reaching the sensor, drops it down by around about one stop when you actually activate the teleconverter, turning this F4 lens into an F5.6 lens, as well as you do lose a little bit of contrast and also slows down the autofocus and image stabilization. But this will be far better than any other teleconverter because it's actually built into the optical formula. Firstly, you can turn it on and off really quickly just simply by this switch. It's also been optically designed to work with this lens. So versus other teleconverters you have to put before the lens in between the camera, this one is basically designed to work with the lens specifically. So you are gonna get better image quality than a traditional teleconverter. Now you've also got a great amount of customization options with this lens as well. First up, you've got an auto focus to manual focus switch. And just below that, you've also got a focus limiter switch. That limiter to switch has three different modes. You've got full autofocus, then you've got two meters to six meters, and then six meters to infinity. So if you are struggling with the autofocus or always focusing on subjects further away or close to you, you can dial in that focus limiter to get slightly faster autofocus. Now you've also got a drop-in filter system with this lens as well, and it uses a 52 mil drop-in filter system. Now that's because this lens has got a gigantic front element, which means most normal filters wouldn't be able to work with this lens. So if you do want to use a neutral density filter or maybe a circular polarizer filter, you'll just need to buy those 52 mil drop-in filters that you can buy from Canon's website. Now, just above that, you've also got that 1.4 times teleconverter. You've got a lock switch, so you can lock it either off or on. Now, this lens has also got image stabilization and you'll be able to switch it on and off with a switch, as well as the image stabilization has got three different modes. Mode one is for general use. Mode two is better when you're panning or tracking subjects. So let's say you're using this from automotive and maybe you've got a car passing to the left and right. It's better for tracking that subject. You get more successful autofocus. And then mode three is good for birds or erratic wildlife. What it does is it only activates the image stabilization when you half press the shutter button. And then lastly, you've got a focus preset switch. Now this switch actually is really handy when using it for wildlife or sports photography. All you need to do is activate it by simply pressing the set button and it will automatically set at a certain focus distance. You can either have its minimum focus distance or maximum focus distance or any distance you like. And basically all you need to do is turn the switch at the front to activate it. You've also got a beep so you know when it is activated. Now, because this is a zoom lens, you've got a gigantic zoom ring as well as a fairly smooth focus ring. You've also got a focus window with this lens as well. Now, this lens is really easy to use even with gloves. I took this lens uh, to Norfolk and it was very, very cold. So I had gloves on and it was easy to use. So if you are thinking of taking this lens to a very cold environment, maybe the Arctic or maybe Norway, this lens is going to be ideal for you. I really liked how large and how easy it was for all of the switches as well as the zoom and focus ring. It was just really easy to use in a very cold environment. And right at the top, you've got the focus preset switch as well as four customizable buttons. And you can have these basically change any aspect within the camera. You'll just need to go into the camera settings to activate the buttons. 
So what do you get inside the box? Well, you obviously get the lens and you also get the lens hood. Now this lens hood is metal, which actually makes it great when traveling. You're less likely to actually damage the lens thanks to the gigantic lens hood, which you get. I actually like how it's also rubberized at the end so you can place it down without necessarily damaging or scratching the floor when you do. Now you've also get a front and rear lens cap. The front cap is this kind of fabric material and it's just because of the size of the lens. You wouldn't be able to traditionally put a normal lens cap on there because it would be the size of a dinner plate. So they have this fabric one, which you can see is used for other lenses as well. And then the last thing you get is a hard case with a set of keys. Now what's really nice about this hard case is it's travel accepted. So you can take it on a plane fairly easily and it just makes it so much easier to travel with this lens. I actually used it as a little seat as well. So sometimes if you're sitting in a hide, there's very few seating accommodations. So you can actually use it as a seat. It's really well made. Just all I would say is don't lose it because I've checked on Canon's website and they're actually charging 800 pounds to replace it. So you can see it's actually really premium. And obviously it comes with keys, which means it is also lockable, which is nice. And the last thing you get is a replaceable tripod pod foot. Uh, this one's got a slightly larger one. Uh, as you can see, it's pretty big. It's good. It's got nice grips. You can actually hold onto the lens. But if you're finding it's a little bit too big, you've got a replaceable one, which is really nice. It's a little bit smaller and takes up a little bit of less room if this lens fits in your camera bag. So overall, this lens comes with a ton of accessories as well as that amazing 1.4 times teleconverter. And the build quality is just exceptional. I thought it was amazing. The big benefit, it is an internally zoomed lens, so which means it doesn't get longer when you use it. So you're less likely to get water or dust or sand in it. I went to Norfolk on the beach and it's very sandy. Sand was constantly blowing in my face and, and there's just no way for dust or sand to get into the optical design of this lens. So versus other super telephoto zoom lenses, this is a great lens, especially if you're taking it to extreme environments. So because of that, I'm gonna be giving it the full marks, the 10 out of 10. Right, so let's talk about the all important image quality. So this lens is a 200 to 400 mil f4, which means it's got a consistent aperture all the way through its focal range, which does make it different versus other zoom lenses. Like for example, the EF 100 to 400 mil, that has a variable aperture, which means the aperture changes throughout its focal range from f4.5 to 5.6. So you're gonna get a consistent aperture, doesn't matter what focal range you're shooting at. In addition, you also get that 1.4 times teleconverter. So when you are after a little bit more reach, you can whack on that teleconverter and get that little bit of extra reach with this lens, turning this lens into a 280 to 560 mil focal range. Now I took this lens to Horsey Gap in Norfolk to photograph the gray seals. And I must say this lens was great for that environment, giving me a nice amount of flexibility over my focal range, shooting 200 mil and then all the way up to 560 mil all in one lens. But is it sharp? Let's have a look at a few graph images. So wide open at 200 millimeters at f4, if we go ahead and zoom in, you can see we're getting great sharpness in the center as well as the corners. There's a little bit of chromatic aberration noticeable in the corners, but I must say it is incredibly subtle. Then if we go ahead and step down to f5.6, you can see that the center stays really sharp and the corners get a little bit brighter as well as a little bit sharper and as well as increase in contrast. And it's the same situation with f8. And then if we go ahead and step down to f11, they are still incredibly sharp and they are sharp all the way to f16. Right, so let's go ahead and zoom in to 400 millimeters. Right, so let's go ahead and zoom in. If we go to the center and the corners, we can see we're getting really good sharpness in the center where the corners are a little bit softer and that chromatic aberration has been added back in again. But we can remove that. If we go ahead and step down to f5.6, we can see how sharp this lens is in the center. Although the corners haven't sharpened up as much when it were wide open at 200 millimeters. And then it's the same with f8 all the way to f16. Right, so let's go ahead and engage that 1.4 times teleconverter. Now we're shooting at 560 millimeters. So if you go ahead and zoom in, we can see we're not getting the sharpness we did without the teleconverter. The images are still sharp in the center, but you can see the corners are a little bit darker as well as a little bit softer and lacking in contrast. And as you can see, we are shooting here at f5.6. So if we step down to f8, you can see dramatically 
basically how much better the corners are versus f5.6. So if you are going to use the teleconverter, I would recommend stepping down at least one stop to get nice and sharp images. And it's the same situation with f11, really sharp in the center and really sharp in the corners and the same situation with f16. So this lens is incredibly sharp, but you do lose a little bit of sharpness when you use the teleconverter. Right, so let's have a look at the overall distortion and vignetting. So wide open at 200 millimeters f4, you can see there's a little bit of vignetting, but almost no distortion to be seen. It is a very flat profile, which is incredible for what you think how versatile this lens is from 200 to 400 millimeters. Most zoom lenses do suffer from some distortion. Now if we go ahead and step down to f5.6, we can push that vignetting to the corners and it pretty much completely disappears at f8. So let's go ahead and zoom in at 400 millimeters. So back at f4, we can see that again, not a lot of distortion or vignetting. There's a little bit of vignetting, but it is very subtle, but basically no distortion, which is really impressive for this lens. It's a nice flat profile, both at 200 and 400 millimeters. We can push that vignetting all the way to the corners at f5.6, and it pretty much disappears at f8. Right, so let's go ahead and engage that teleconverter. As you can see at f5.6, there is now noticeable pincushion distortion with the teleconverter activated, as well as a little bit more vignetting. We can push that vignetting to the corners if we have a look at f8 and completely remove it at f11. So you can see that teleconverter does have a few optical problems when it comes to the overall sharpness, as well as adding a little bit more distortion and vignetting to your images. So what I recommend doing, make sure to turn on profile corrections on in camera. And the last thing we're going to look at is flaring. Now, due to this lens's quite complicated optical formula with 25 elements in 20 groups and 30 elements if you include the teleconverter, this lens has incredibly bad flaring with flaring optics appearing all over the field of view with a super loss in contrast. Now, it is quite difficult to make this lens flare just due to the narrow field of view being a 200 to 400 mil lens. But if you do point it directly at light, you are going to get really bad flaring, but at least it is a little bit cinematic. So make sure you do use a lens hood if you are shooting towards the sun. So as you can see by those image quality tests, this lens really did outperform my expectations. I thought it was an amazing lens when it comes to the overall image quality. I'm used to shooting on the EF 100 to 400 or the Sigma 150 to 600 mil, and I've used those lens and I like zoom lenses because it gives you that nice versatile nature, but you never get that sharp images when you compare it to prime lenses. But I must say this lens here is by far the best zoom lens I have used for EF fit. I must say it is amazing. I just loved how versatile and how flexible the focal range was when you use that teleconverter. And that teleconverter is by far the best teleconverter I've used. I've used Canon ones and Sigma ones and they've always had quite bad optical problems or I've struggled using it when it comes to the autofocus. But this one here is all the benefits of a normal teleconverter without many of the disadvantages. Sure, you lose a little bit of contrast and as well as it introduces a little bit more distortion and vignetting, but that's something you can easily fix in post when editing your photos in Lightroom Classic. So I must say, this is one of my favorite lenses to use when it comes to wildlife photography. I'm not a wildlife photographer by any stretch of the imagination, but if I were one, this would definitely be a big contender for my camera bag. So because of that, I'm gonna be giving it the full marks, the 10 out of 10. So let's have a look at the overall size and weight, and there's no getting around it. This lens is really big and really, really heavy, but let's compare it to a few other lenses to work out, is it worth lugging this lens around and having it in your camera bag? So let's have a look at the overall weight first. So this lens here, the 200 to 400 mil, comes in at 3.62 kilograms. Now, if we go ahead and compare it to its baby brother, the Canon EF 100 to 400 mil, that only comes in at 1.64 kilograms. Then if we compare it to the EF, 500 mil f4, this comes in at 3.19 kilograms. Then we can compare it to the older EF 400 mil DO lens. Now this is a diffractive optics lens, so it's designed to be as small and as lightweight as possible. And that comes in at 2.1 kilograms. And the last lens we can realistically compare it to is the brand new 
RF 100 to 300 mil f 2.8. And that lens only comes in at 2.59 kilograms. Then if we go ahead and look at the size chart here, you can really see how big this lens is. So this lens definitely isn't the smallest and definitely not the lightest lens on my list today. In fact, it is actually the heaviest. And I really could tell when carrying this lens around, it was just really cumbersome and it really heavy. By far, I actually think it's the heaviest lenses I've ever reviewed on this channel. So not gonna be giving it a very high score on this one because I must say it is a brute of a lens. So I'm only gonna be giving it a four out of 10. So let's move on to autofocus and image stabilization and what this lens was like for video. So this lens has got a USM or ultrasonic focus motor. And I must say, it's really fast, really dependable, and exactly like most other L lenses. So I use this with my Canon EOS R5, as well as my Canon C70. And both for photography and video, this lens performed really well when it comes to the autofocus. It could just stick with the gray seal and pretty much just stay with it. It could find the eye from a good distance, as well as for video, it was able to track subjects really nice with my C70. Now, the image stabilization was very similar, really good and really dependable. To be honest with you, like most other high-end L lenses, the four stops of image stabilization just worked really well with handheld, even with my C70, which actually lacks IBIS. So one thing definitely to note is the autofocus was definitely slower with the teleconverter enabled. So if you're after the absolute fastest autofocus of this lens, don't use the teleconverter. Although it didn't slow it down too much, it was noticeable when the teleconverter was activated. So I thought that was definitely something to note. But overall, I've got to admit, the actual autofocus and image stabilization aspect of this lens was amazing. And using it for video, especially with my new C70, I absolutely loved the video quality. So because of that, I'm gonna be giving it the full marks, the 10 out of 10. So this lens has got great image quality, amazing build quality and superior autofocus and image stabilization. But what are Canon asking for, for all of these great features? Well, I'm afraid they are asking for quite a lot of money, being one of the most expensive lenses Canon have ever made. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a look at the brand new price and also have a look at the second-hand market to work out, is this lens good value for money? So let's have a look at the brand new price first, coming in at a whopping 12,069 pounds. But second-hand, because like I was saying at the start of the video, this actually was released back in May 2013, you're actually able to get it for around 3,000 pounds. In fact, this lens here is from MPB, the sponsor of this video, and it actually only comes in at 2,999 pounds for the very lens in this review. So if you are interested, make sure to go ahead over to their website. The other lens we can compare it to today is the Canon EF 100 to 400 mil F 4.5 to 5.6. That lens there, brand new, comes in at 2,000 599 pounds, but in the second-hand market, you'll be able to find a decent one in reasonable condition for around 800 pounds. Next up, you've got the EF 500mm F4 Mark II, a very similar focal length and similar aperture. If you're looking at one, you might be looking at the other, and brand new, that comes in at 9,559 pounds, but second-hand, you'll be able to find it for around 4,700 pounds. You can see a little bit more expensive second-hand versus is the 200 to 400 mil. Next up, you've got the 400 mil DO lens. That's that diffractive optics lens we compared it to earlier. Brand new, that is 6,729 pounds, but secondhand, you'll be able to find it for around 3,800 to 3,900 pounds, depending on condition. And the last lens we've got here is the brand new RF 100 to 300 mil F 2.8. Brand new, that comes in at 11,499 pounds. And because it's only recently come out, I wasn't able to find a second-hand one currently available. There wasn't one on Wex Photo Video's website or MPB or pretty much any website for that matter. I just couldn't find a price. But I would estimate it would probably be around about 10,000 pounds in reasonable condition. So brand new price, this lens is horrendously expensive and would not recommend. But second-hand, on the other hand, only coming in at around £3,000, I would say that's really good value for money, especially when you compare it to the other prime lenses. But compared to that 100 to 400, that still offers great value for money. And out of the two, I'd probably still gravitate towards the 200 to 400 just because of the superior image quality and thanks to that amazing aperture, far better for low light. So 
I'm not going to give it a massive score because it's definitely not the cheapest lens on my list, but definitely not the most expensive and definitely don't buy brand new. So because of that, I'm going to be giving it a six out of 10 for price. So it's that time of the video where we look at the pros and cons to really work out is this lens worth a spot in your camera bag? Let's have a look at the pros first. This lens has got great build quality. Because of its internally zooming feature, this lens is great when it comes to taking it to extreme environments like the Arctic or even a desert. This lens is also incredibly sharp and probably one of the best performing zoom lenses I've reviewed on this channel. It's also one of very few lenses with a built-in 1.4 times teleconverter, which will always outperform other teleconverters and it gives you so much more flexibility over focal range. It also has really fast autofocus and very dependable for wildlife and even sports photography. It also has great image stabilization. If you place it with a non-IBIS camera like my C70, you're getting up to four stops of image stabilization, which means you can use this lens handheld for both photography and video. So as you can see, a decent amount of pros, but let's have a look at the cons and the downsides of this lens and why maybe another lens might be worth suited in your camera bag. This lens is really big and really heavy and to be honest with you, won't fit in most people's camera bags, which means you're gonna have to hand hold it, which does make it quite cumbersome on a photo shoot. This lens is also a lot of money, far more expensive than other lenses, like for example, the EF 100 to 400 mil, which is far better value for money. It's also quite an old lens now, and who knows, Canon may be bringing out a new RF version to replace this lens in the near future. At the time of making this review, this lens is almost 11 years old. So as you can see, there's a decent amount of pros as well as a decent amount of cons. You just have to work out as a photographer or filmmaker, what's more important important to you? Is it maybe image quality, size and weight, or even value for money? If it's image quality, then I highly recommend this lens. This is one of the best performing zoom lenses I have used for a DSLR camera. Great image quality, especially at f4, offering a beautiful shallow depth of field, and you'll be able to get shots that you just wouldn't be able to get on other zoom lenses, like for example, the 100 to 400 or the larger Sigma 150 to 600 mil. But if it's size and weight that's more important to you, maybe you're a travel photographer, then this lens might not necessarily be the best fit. Because of its large size and weight, it is very cumbersome to carry around. And actually, it didn't fit in my own camera bag. So I would maybe recommend another lens, like for example, the EF 100 to 400 mil, which is far smaller or far lighter. But maybe if value for money is most important, then I really do think this lens comes out on top. It offers great value for money, especially when you compare it to other lenses, but only when you look at the second-hand market. Brand new, do not buy this lens. It is far too expensive. But second-hand, because of the age of this lens, you'll be able to get some great deals on, for example, MPB, which is the sponsor of this video. If you're interested in getting any great deals on lenses, cameras, or anything second-hand, highly recommend going over to their website. I'll make sure to place the link in the description to this lens here, as well as if you want to trade in gear. Trading your old gear is really simple. Just simply go to the link in the description. And with an overall score of 40 out of 50, this is a recommended lens to have in your camera bag. But write it down in the comments below. Would you buy this lens? I'd love to hear your guys' feedback. I've been James for Photo Fever, and I'll catch you guys next time.